previously on Karate Nerd in China. Today, we're going to Yongchun Village. <laughs> Every white crane school has a statuette of the woman who founded the style. This is the most famous dojo yes, of the white it. crane. Yes. Hey, Chinese. Fang Chinyan's yeah. father learned Southern Shaolin, uh. and then she added the crane movement. Half of the bubishi is said to be about monk fist boxing, the style practiced at Shaolin. So saying that karate doesn't have this, this kind of uh, coil like ground. Mm. It's time to visit the southern Shaolin temple. Follow along an epic adventure to rediscover the lost roots of karate. As Jesse Incap uncovers the ancient source of karate's kung fu connection. This is what the history books never told you. You're watching Karate Nerd in China. I'm on my way to find the Southern Shaolin Temple. Unfortunately, nobody knows where the original one is because it was burnt down. Today, there are many Southern Shaolin temples, and they all claim to be the real one. The one we're going to is in the town of Chuanzhou. I'm hoping it's the right one, because it might be the missing link in karate's history. In the meanwhile, Alex has taken us to one of his friends who teaches a unique style of Kung Fu. This is his dojo. Hey, hey, go. At first glance, it looks like a regular Kung Fu academy, complete with deadly ancient weapons and kids screaming in agony. But here, they teach a special style of Kung Fu. According to Nakamoto Masahiro, the karate historian who's strangling me with a pair of nunchucks, this unique Kung Fu style was practiced at the King's Castle in Okinawa. The style is called dog boxing, and the man getting his butt kicked in this photo is actually Nakamoto Masahiro. What a coincidence. Yeah, have a seat. Okay. Dog boxing is a form of Chinese ground fighting. It consists of eight different kata and hundreds of functional applications divided into two categories. How to take someone down to the ground and how to defend yourself when you're on the ground. Although dog boxing didn't influence karate directly, it's still a fascinating style, especially since it was practiced by the king's guards at the courtyard of Shuri Castle. Oh, very interesting. Sure, dog boxing might have been practiced in ancient Okinawa, but it feels like a sidetrack, and it's not even mentioned in the Bubishi. So I gotta keep moving on. Back to Shaolin. We finally arrive in the ancient town of Chuanzhou. Marco Polo once said it had the world's greatest port, but we're not going to the coast. Strangely enough, our taxi driver doesn't know where Shaolin is. 
Then, from out of nowhere, it suddenly appears. This is the Southern Shaolin Temple. It's time to film an epic entrance. No. Yeah, let's just... Okay. This walks like straight behind me. Okay. He's done it again. What the hell? I'm, I'm not touching. I'm not it? touching anything. I literally didn't touch anything. I just. <laughs> no, I, I believe you. I can't believe I'm actually here. It's like a dream come true. Time for a kick pick. Oh, this random Chinese guy also wanted to take a photo. Okay, sit here. Got it? Oh, ha, ha. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, you left me hanging. <laughs> left me hanging. As we enter the temple grounds, I quickly realize that this place is huge. There are dozens and dozens of buildings, full with beautiful and terrifying sculptures, surrounding different places of Buddhist worship, and the temple complex seems to stretch itself far up the mountain but I'm not seeing any signs of Kung Fu. Suddenly, something catches my eye. It's a stone with Chinese characters on it. When I ask Will to translate, he blows my mind. On Southern Kung Fu? Really? Yeah. So, wait, this stone tablet outside the Shaolin Temple literally says you should pass on Kung Fu. Yeah, Southern Kung Fu. Southern Kung Fu, yeah. not that Northern bullshit. Yeah. I have a feeling we're on the right path. Perhaps we might find some monk fist boxing here after all. But strangely enough, I haven't seen a single monk so far. The place almost feels abandoned. So Will, how about you explain why I had to walk over that kind of wooden beam on the ground? All right, so in all the temples in China and in like traditional households, they have these kind of like a step. It's called a munkan. I'm not sure exactly how you translate it in English. You're not, you're not allowed to step on it. You have to step over it. And the reason it's there is to trip over ghosts and to stop, because ghosts are like the bringers of bad luck, right? So it's to trip them over and stop them coming into your home or your temple or whatever. As we keep walking, I stumble upon something that gives me hope. I've seen these things in Kung Fu movies. They're known as Plum Blossom Poles. Look, there it is. The famous Plum Blossom Poles. I'm gonna give them a try. I hope they don't mind. I totally feel like a Shaolin monk right now. Oh, this is harder than it looks. I think that's enough for my first try. <laughs> so I bet these small ones are for the kids or maybe the beginners or really old people. And then we got the super tall ones here and then kind of they, they slope downwards here. I kind of jumped off around here. And then they start down here. What a cool traditional exercise. I think I'm gonna build me a set of those at home. Hello. Hey. Shaolin monk. And then it happens. Camera. We finally meet a real Shaolin monk. Are you actually forgot? Is he a Shaolin monk? I, I think so. Uh, oh, me He's actually one of the senior monks in the temple. I think we just met a real Shaolin monk. If you look closely, you can see that he has 12 circular burn marks on his head. That means he's taken the strictest vows of the temple. And now he's inviting us for tea. How long has he been a monk? 
more than 30 years. Wow. So is this where the monks live? Mm -hmm. uh, no, Fong said, like, bye, bye, Fong. He's like, we need to bow to Buddha. This one? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Wow. Am I a Buddhist now? I guess so. I'm shocked. I have so many questions. Like, how do you live here? What do you do all day? Do you know Kung Fu? What do you eat for breakfast? Turns out, he meditates for 8 hours per day and only eats vegetables. But he doesn't practice martial arts. However, there are other monks who do. They're called warrior monks. And if we go further up the hill, we might find them. I am so excited. In just a few minutes, I might find an ancient source of karate's history. Okay, so we just left the Shaolin monk and now I can hear that they're training over there. So let's see if there's some actual Shaolin Kung Fu practice going on. Oh my gosh, it's a young warrior monk performing a kata in front of his teacher. Okay, we're gonna go talk to that kid practicing with the weapon. When the monks see us approaching, they suddenly go quiet. It's a This feels so awkward. But then Will tells them that I practice karate. And that's when everything changes. So the guy is saying that the mayor of Okinawa was here. And that, that letter was... Oh really? That letter was sent to them by the mayor of Okinawa saying that this is the roots of karate. This is the exact place I wanted to find. Uh, this is his main weapon. This is his, oh, his like, specialty. Thing. I immediately ask Will if they can show me some empty hand stuff. To my big surprise, they reply by giving me a private lesson. Believe it or not, the first thing they teach me is literally the first thing I teach my karate students back home straight punches. It's like Chinese karate. The shoulders always square. So you, you sort of uh, twist out, you, you reset. Uh -huh. yeah, this way. Mm. It feels like I'm learning the karate stuff that White Crane was missing. This could be what the second half of the Bubishi is all about. Unfortunately, the lesson abruptly stops when an old monk crashes our party. Apparently, monks are not allowed to teach outsiders and, well, I'm not exactly ready to become a monk myself. As a result, we're escorted to the entrance. Luckily, there is a Kung Fu master outside of Shaolin that can teach us more. His dojo is actually right here in Chuanzhou. If Will gives him a call, we might be able to visit him in the morning. It's been a long day at Shaolin, and the visit was way above my expectations. I am speechless. It's been such an amazing time here at the Shaolin Temple. I hope you guys really like that. Tomorrow is a new day, and I'm ready to rediscover the lost roots of karate. How about you?